Okay, in this video, we are going to do some simple fourth programming. And the microcontroller that we're going to program is the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is on Arduino Nano and on Arduino Uno. Now, a viewer of my channel has taken the time and effort to learn how to program in fourth, and he's built his first project. It involves software and hardware. And he's started his own YouTube channel, and he describes his project on his YouTube channel, and I'll put a link in the description box. So his project is a water alarm, a water detection alarm for an RV. So it's a good example to see how you could start programming in fourth. So all you need to start is Arduino Uno or Nano and a USB cable and some way to program a hex file into the microcontroller. Okay, this is my setup to program a hex file into the Arduino Nano. So I have an AVRISP Mark II programmer. And this is an original programmer from Atmel, which they have discontinued, but you could get knockoffs online. So this USB cable connects up to the computer, which is running AVR Studio. Then I have a six conductor cable, ribbon cable, plugged into the ICSP connector on the Nano. It's a six pin connector. And this USB connector is, is supplying power to the Nano because this programmer does not supply power to the Nano. So we have this plugged in, we run AVR Studio, we go to Tools and AVR Programmer, and there we could upload a hex file, and the hex file is called interactive arduino.hex. So it's ia.hex, and that's the file we upload to run the fourth operating system. Now these programmers are getting harder to get, so the ones that we could get now are called USB ASP and Spark Fun makes one, and if you go to Banggood, there's a few out from China. So I'm going to be looking at those because they're easier to get to upload a hex file into the Arduino Nano. Okay, here's the USB ASP programmer, which we could use to upload a hex file into the Nano. And it comes with a 10-pin JTAG connector with a 10-pin ribbon cable. But we only need six wires to program the Nano. So it comes with a little adapter. So it's a 10-pin to 6-pin. And with the ground on the top, it plugs in this direction, like that. So now we could run some software called AVR Dude, and we could program a hex file into the Arduino Nano. Now AVR Dude is a command line program, but there's a GUI version called AVR Dude S. So we could use that to upload a hex file into the Arduino Nano. Okay, now to program a hex file into the microcontroller using the USB ASP programmer. We have to download some software from the internet. It's called AVR Dude S. So search online for AVR Dude S and download the file into your computer. And then we take our six pin adapter and we plug it in to the microcontroller. And then we take our programmer and we plug that into our computer USB port. And you can see it's powering up the nano. So the programmer actually applies power to the nano. So now we could run AVR Dude S and we could upload a hex file into the microcontroller. Okay, I have AVR Dude S up and running on my computer. So the first thing we have to do, we have to select a USB ASP programmer. So if we go to the very top where it says Programmer, and we do the pull down menu, now these are all the programmers that AVR Dude S supports. If we go almost to the bottom, we could select USB ASP. Now the port, we select USB, and we go over to MCU, and we hit detect. You see at the bottom output screen, it has detected that Mega 320P microcontroller. So now we know it's communicating with the microcontroller. So now we go to the fuses and lock bits. So we read the fuses and we read the lock bits. So low fuse should be hex FF. The high fuse should be hex D8. Extended fuse should be hex FD. And the lock bits should be hex FF. Now if you don't get those values, you can write them in the text box and then hit the right button for the lock bits and the right button for the fuses. So now next we have to upload the hex file. So we go up to flash and we hit our browse button and we find our hex file in, on our computer. And you can see there I have ia.hex. That's my interactive Arduino. So we go to write, we select write and we go down to program. So now it's starting to write the hex file into the microcontroller. And after it's finished writing, it's going to read the microcontroller and do a verify. So right now it's writing. 
Now it's reading, now it's verifying the flash. And there it's done. So it's verified and it's done. So now interactive Arduino is running on my microcontroller. Okay, if you have AVR Dude S up and running on your computer and it does not see the programmer and will not detect the microcontroller, you probably have a USB driver problem. So go online and search for Zadig, Z A D I G, download the software, and that will let you install a USB driver so AVR Dude S can communicate with the programmer. Okay, I have Zadig up and running on my computer. And if we go up to options and select list all devices, and look at the devices, and we go down to see USB ASP. So now we could load some drivers. So if you're running Windows 8 or Windows 7, then I would use this driver, LIB USB Win32. And if you're using Windows 10, then I would use this driver, LIB USB K. And then hit replace driver, and it will load the driver into your computer. And then you'll be able to communicate with your programmer. Okay, I have interactive Arduino up and running on the Nano. Now you just have to load that hex file in once because on board there's an interpreter, compiler, and programmer. So all we need now is a USB connection to our computer and a serial terminal program like TerraTerm and we can start programming. So our first lesson will be to activate the LED on board the Nano which is on pin 13. So I'll type on the keyboard pin 13 high. You see the LED comes on. And if I type pin 13 low LED goes off. If I go blink, LED, LED will blink, and any key will shut it off. I could also turn on the LED by typing LED on, or and to turn it off, LED off. That's a very simple programming, so we'll have a look how we could do that. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my Nano. So I'll press the reset button on the Nano and there's my hello screen, interactive Arduino and if I hit enter on the keyboard I get an OK prompt. So the first word we'll execute is dot pins which will give us the configuration of all the pins. So that's the layout basically of the Arduino Nano. The pins are on the perimeter of the module and you can see pin 13 is configured as an input because on reset all the GPIO pins are configured as inputs. So to turn on the LED on pin 13 we have to configure it as an output so I'll do that. So pin 13 output now we'll have a look at the pins again and you can see there pin 13 is an output. So we just type pin 13 high The LED comes on, pin 13 low, the LED turns off. If I type blink, LED, the LED is blinking, and hit any key, shuts it off. Okay, so that's some simple programming that you could try out. And once you get the OK prompt, you're good to go. Now the Atmega 328P microcontroller has three GPIO ports on the chip. That's port B, port C, and port D. Now here's a chart showing those three ports and how they're wired up to the pins on the Nano. Now when I start a program, I want some GPIO pins configured as inputs and some as outputs. So I make pins 2 to 7 inputs with pull-ups and pins 8 to 13 outputs. Now to do that I have one word, it's called init. So first of all we'll reset the micro and we'll have a look at the configuration of the pins. So dot pins, anytime you see a, a dot in front of a word, just say the word print. So that, pr that means print pins. So you can see they're all inputs because it just came out of reset. Now if I type init and have a look at the pins, you can see pins 8 to 13 are outputs and pins 2 to 7 are inputs with pull-ups. And we could have a look at the pull-ups. So we go print, pull-up, so 1 equals a pull-up active on pins configured as inputs. So as you can see, the six ones there, those are the uh, six pull-ups on the inputs. And a 1 equals output 
high on pins configured as outputs. So if we have some pins configured as outputs, like pins 8 to 13, and if we see a 1, that means that pin is high on the output. So we could turn on the LED. So that's port B, pin bit 5. So we have a look at the pull-up. You see port B, you go to the top there, and you go over, bit 5 is 1, because that's the LED on. Now if I turn the LED off, have a look. You see it's off. So that's how we could monitor the ports, ports B, port C, port D, when we're doing programming. Okay, before I start programming, I want to know how much flash memory I have available. So I type MEM for memory, and I have 22,749 flash bytes free. So I can start a program. So start with colon, that starts the compiler. The name of the program is called greeting. And we'll do a carriage return for a clean line. And dot quote, and we'll go hello world. End quote. Semicolon. That takes us out of the compiler into the interpreter. And we type flush. That puts it into uh, flash. So if we go mem, so we have 22,715 flash bytes free. So we took up 34 bytes with that program. So if we type greeting, there's hello world. If we go greeting five times, we get it five times. Now if you look into the dictionary, you can see at the very top, there's greeting. That's, that's what we just did. That's the program. So it's in the dictionary. And you can see other words that we use. There's dot pins. There's dot pull up. There's a knit. There's many. There's LED off, LED on. So these are all words in the library. So these are little chunks of code that when we type at the OK prompt, they'll run. So this is like working with Lego. We, they're building blocks. So if you look at the very bottom, these words here are written in assembler. So they're very fast. And from these words, from these assembler words, I created these words. So now you have all these words to work with. That's your Lego blocks. And you can make any program you want just by building the program block by block with these words. Now if we read a program, and here's an example. It's called Wigwag. So that's the lights at a railway crossing. So now if I look at the dictionary, so first I'll flush it, put it into flash, look at the dictionary, and there it is, wigwag. But now if I reset, if I do a reset, and look at the dictionary, we lost it. So now when you're programming, if you want to make a word permanent, you write some code and you say, okay, this is, this is a handy piece of code, I want to keep it. So we'll, we'll write wigwag again. We go flush. Now we go extend. If you look at dictionary, there's a wigwag. If we reset, it's there. So it's permanent now. So tomorrow, when I start programming, it will be there and I could use it. Now, if you write some code and you want to sell it as a product, you want it to boot up and power up. So we could do that. It's called turnkey. And we'll do that with the program Wigwag. So if you look in the dictionary, you can see we have Wigwag there. So we'll make that turnkey so it'll run on boot up. So we take the execution address of Wigwag and we put it into the boot vector. Then we extend that. So now Wigwag will run on boot up and it will be our turnkey product. Okay, here's my Wigwag program set up as turnkey. So if I apply power to the board, it automatically goes into the Wigwag program. And if I do a reset, she comes up in the Wigwag. 
So that's an example of a turnkey product. So check out my description box. I'll have a link to documentation for eForth. And I'll have interactive Arduino hex file download. And check out the viewer's website who is starting to program in fourth.